What up, though? It's your boy Lil Gross, also known as Big Papa Skeeter. And this is another episode of Skeeter of the Week. Alright? I ain't had a haircut in about... This is how you know work getting done. I ain't had a haircut in like three... Maybe... Yeah, it's been like three weeks. So I'm going to get a haircut today. Y'all see later. But like, I just... You know what I'm saying? I just be letting it go sometimes. Man, I'm creative. You know what I'm saying? I'm tapping into my creative bag. I do my business stuff. A lot of my calls is over the phone and stuff anyway. So it don't really... You know what I'm saying? Nobody sees my face. But, and I'm married. So, like, I ain't trying to look fly for nobody, but needs you like when I get my hair cut. So, I'm going uh, to go do that today. But, like, I don't mind skipping a haircut, bro. When you off, in, the hustlers know. Y'all know this. When you off into the grind and all of that, man, you skip a haircut, you locked in. You locked in. It's a different, it's a different feeling, man. It's like, I don't, I don't what do I need a haircut for? And I don't know. It's something about the, 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 the sensory and all of that stuff. I just feel like, like I be in my bag when I'm scruffy. Everybody knows scruffy face low is like, yeah, hustle low. Uh, y'all see it? You know what time it is? So, this week, you know what I'm saying? The kickoff of the NFL season was here, you know? Uh, we recording this on a Friday, the Friday after uh, Thursday Night Football, but the Lions played the Chiefs for the first game of the season. You know what I'm saying? The defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. You know? And now, I'm a Lions fan, as you can tell. Told y'all I'm from Detroit, the real Detroit. Um, I have been a Lions fan. I'm 35. I've been a Lions fan for 45 years. Okay? That's just how I like how intense this is. Now, I have a secondary team. You're allowed to have a secondary team when your main team has been as bad as my team has been. So, I like the Raiders, right? But I'm a Lions fan first through and through, right? I bleed Honolulu blue. So, for me, now we won last night, 21 to 20. But I'm still skeptical. And I'm getting flack from, like, all my homies back at home and everything because everybody's like, oh, nah, but this is a different team. It's a different team. Be that as it may, they got the win and all, but I'm just super critical because the Lions, if you've been on this ride long enough with them, you've been let down a time or two, right? So I just need to see consistency, like, across the board, right? I'm not celebrating mediocrity. I'm not doing no moral victories or none of that. Oh, they played hard. They played hard. And I know people, like, like they point those things out because the Lions team before, like, that was an easy win. What they say, we was the, uh, the the chicken soup game. Where it's like, if you a bad team and you needed to feel good about yourself, you play the Lions and, and beat us by 42 points and, and you're good. Now, that is not the case in Detroit now, right? But I still, like, like we competitive, right? But I still need to see them put together a, a season that's either similar to or better than the 2014 Lions. Now, for all my diehard Lions fans, I'm talking about the diehard diehards, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you ask me, that was arguably the best Lions team that we've had, like, to date, right? I'm talking both sides of the ball. Because we grew up with Barry Sanders. We grew up with Megatron, right? That's that's Those are, like, two main guys. And I'm a Matthew Stafford fan. Some people not. So it's arguable there. But we know without a shadow of a doubt, we got Barry Sanders and we got Megatron, right? Asterisk next to Matthew Stafford, depending on who you ask, right? But 2014, offense and defense was the best team balance wise that I have seen from the Lions still haven't seen like this team is close this team is close but they have to produce and I say that because with that 2014 team we we was we were gonna go I don't know if we was gonna go all the way but we went up there to Dallas and we got that pass interference call and I know I'm in Texas so I gotta watch you know what I'm saying like like because it's Texas right but the Cowboys, and this ain't even normal Cowboy hate. This is just the simple fact that, like, we got cheated out of that game. And that, that, like, the momentum killed all of that. You know what I'm saying? So I say that to say for me, for me to believe that the Lions are legitimate, man, I need to see them, like, win the division. Because I don't know if y'all follow football or not, but the division is wide open. Okay, so I need to see it. They got to win the division. That's It ain't no playing around. Ain't no coming in second. None of that stuff. And I would like to see them go to the second round of the playoffs. That's it. We haven't won a playoff game in 30-something years. 30-something years. So while, yeah, we can win this and do that, we one time we went 8-0, and and everybody, we, all the excitement, everything, and then we lost the rest of the eight games, and we finished the season 8-8. Eight and eight. We went undefeated in the preseason one time and then went on to go 0-16. So that's what, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. You got to pick your spots so on how you want to ride. Now, we die hard, so we're going to ride it out. But, like, I just need to see, like, a little bit more. Now, I'm a... I'm a Go game by game. It was a good win. I'm proud that they won, but I'm still not fully, fully drinking the Honolulu Blue Kool Aid, man. I want to, but like I've, I've seen this, I've seen this go too many times. And, and even last year, right? We were on the cusp, 
But I just was a little, I didn't like the fact that like the city of Detroit and like us Lions fans was celebrating that we almost made the playoffs. Come on, not live. And we've made the playoffs a couple times, like like after 2014 and stuff. It's just we couldn't make it past the first round. So that's why I'm saying, like, I'm not celebrating, like, almost making it. Like, they don't give banners for just being able to beat the Green Bay Packers in the final season of the game. Like, they, they don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Championship caliber organizations don't do that. So this is the make or break year. This is the third year to rebuild. We're going to see y'all. Like, but I'm this is a, a segment from a cynical Lions fan. You feel me? Like, I've just been hurt too many times, man. I got trust issues. But yeah, check this out. We're going to have a clip of the game. Like, right here. We're going to discuss it. It's a clip from the game. It's a clip from the podcast of us talking about the game last night. Right. Here. Detroit Lions played the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champ. Kansas City Chiefs. Fellas, thoughts on the game? Um, It kind of went the way I thought <laughs> Three it was going to go. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of went the way I thought I was going to go. Once I saw that not only Chris Jones was going to be out, which was weird that he was at the game in like a suite. I don't think I've ever seen a whole player holding out go to the game like right. as a fan. That Stop right weird. there. Stop right there. <clears throat> our, our initial conversation <clears throat> was about the value that Chris Jones brought to the Chiefs, right? That was one <clears throat> of the first, like in our group chat, that was one of the first like back and forth that we had, right? <clears throat> Of course, you know me. I go into GM mode, and I'm like, ah, nah, well, you know, they don't value dog, this not that. You know, Trading. Y'all was bringing up, like, like his contributions in the Super Bowl and in the playoffs and how he helped them win. And I was explaining that, like, the organization, that's cool, but if they don't value that, which is they showing us that they don't, it's going to be weird. So I say that to say it's weird that Chris Jones shows up sandwiched between two niggas in suits. And he cuddled up, looked like the kid from the blind side. Yeah, it looked like, it looked like <laughs> that was right on, on the Sopranos. I, I mean, to me, that seemed right on par with what you're supposed to do. Instead of just sitting there like, I'm, I'm going to stand out. He's like, no, I think I'm about to sit right here and watch you niggas lose. Because guess what? You need, need me. me. You yeah. want to win? Put booby in. Right. So, <laughs> Jones, Jones, get all the facial expressions every time. Like, oh, oh, I would have made that yep, tackle. Uh, no like, Jones, yeah. no Kelsey. <laughs> New offensive linemen, inexperienced receivers. Only so much a great player can can do on his can own. Can overcome. And we, and we saw that. And the Lions had a great game plan. You know, they controlled the clock. They ran the ball really well. They got probably a top five offensive line in the league. They have a good one new one-two punch at running back with Montgomery and Gibbs. Gibbs flashed a lot. It's like yeah. he's going to be a player in the league. Mm-hmm. Amon Ra, the sun god, he 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 made some good catches. Jared Goff <laughs> made. That's his name. <laughs> yeah, that's what it literally means. Yeah. Jared Goff. I know uh, three. So I read books too, nigga. No, I'm saying too. I'm talking to the audience. I'm, ta- I'm talking to the audience. They may not know. I got you. I got but, you. But, uh, and Goff made, I know you'd be hard on Jared Goff, but he made some Ooh, really clutch. Jared, we call him Jared so, Goff on this part. Yeah. Mm. Some very clutch and tough third down throws to kind of seal the game and keep He, bet, he better have. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, um, well, I'll let everyone else give their takes. I know we're going to talk about some of the miscues we saw in the game. So I'll let everyone else kind of speak on it. Well, E Ray, you you've adopted the squad. Like you like right. so what did what did you see like like that stood out to you? Um some same thing I've been saying since last year. It's an adoption of grit, moxie, the mm-hmm. actual shit that means something when you're trying to change the culture because they haven't won in so long. All right, we back. Hope y'all enjoyed that clip, man. Uh, you see it? Transformation. You feel me? Like, it's hustle, create, then get cleaned up. You feel me? And what I like about growing my hair out and, like, just not, you know what I'm saying, getting it cut for a couple weeks. Look at this. Banging. Shout out to Naturally Named Moisturizer Duel. You feel me? All up in there. Uh oh. What's up, kiddo? Daddy, what are you doing? Say hi to the Inaudibles. Let's say hi to the inaudibles. No, put me down. Why not? Don't stay me up. Say what's up. Don't stay me up. Don't you want to say hi? I had to hold you up so they can see you on camera. No, I can't see you. On camera? No. Not on camera. On camera? No, no. Not on camera. No. Oh, you feel she's off camera now, guys. You like daddy's haircut? 
Told you that's my that's that's our shining light, bro. Like like she keep us she keep us up, she keep us going, man. Keep us motivated, keep us on task and on point, man. Um, I think I told y'all I'm stuck in, on the episode. Where I was like I'm stuck in the grind, like like it just be tough sometimes, man. I do feel like isolated at times, cause like I said, all my my homies and everybody is back home, but like I just keep just persevering. But um, it's an adjustment. I'm okay because, like, I got my daughter and I got my wife and everything, man. But, like, just my – it's been a shift, if you will. And, and I do feel like, you know, just being transparent with y'all, man, I suffer from, from from things too. You know what I'm saying? Like, creating and all of that is, is a coping mechanism for real, for real. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. But it's like like dealing with grief. You know what I'm saying? Depression for sure. You know what I'm saying? That, that is – for me, it's more like seasonal. It's like different things happen. I feel like anybody growing up in like the inner city, like you're going to have some form of just like depression. It's just, there's no way around it. Anxiety to a certain extent. I don't have like crippling anxiety, but like I, you know what I'm saying? Now, that's on the, the bottom of the scale. I don't suffer from anxiety as much as like some of the other things, but depression for sure. I know for a fact like grief, what I say, like uh, survivor's remorse or survivor's guilt, as they call it. You know what I'm saying? Like like when you still kind of, you you are in a good spot, but you kind of feel bad for like like the other people around you and everything. Um, and a little bit, or a lot of bit, depending on like, you know what I'm saying, how you want to say it. But like a little bit of PTSD, man. Like I, th I think growing up in the hood, we all got that. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it is what it is. You see some things that you're probably not supposed to see, but... It's the hood, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that stuff lives with you, man. But I make a, a honest effort to just, like, cope in positive ways. I deal with it all the time, but, like, I just try to cope positively. That's why I'm so committed to the journey and the grind and the process because I don't want any of those things or, like, the, those internal battles that I'm fighting to, like, bleed off onto my daughter, right? I don't want to transfer those things to her, right? Like, she's already going to have her own experiences as she grows up. I don't want my baggage and stuff to be on her. So, and even before I had my daughter, these are all things that I, I actively, like, just addressed and was working on, still working on. I had anger management. You know what I'm saying? I had to go to anger management for a situation many, many years ago. But, like, I had to work on my temper. And, and what that lesson taught me was re uh, relegating my emotions, you feel what I'm saying? Like understanding my emotions, understand how to process them. You know what I'm saying? Understanding not to just react like right away and all of that. So like I, it, it was, it's been a journey, still on the journey, right? But it's just something that I deal with. Like I said, I'm not perfect at all. Like I, I be having my own like hangups and stuff, but I just check myself and be like, hey, bro, like you tripping right now. Because again, if you check yourself, you don't have to worry about other people checking you. You know what I'm saying? Or if they do, like you already, you can understand and appreciate what they're doing because like you've done it to yourself. You feel me? Um, the other thing, and this is relatively new just because like I said, it, it's shifting. Things are shifting. But normally I wouldn't, I don't have like trust issues and stuff because like I said, I grew up in kind of like my own little like ecosystem like with, with, with my peoples and in my neighborhood and in my community. And I always personally felt the support from them. Still do. So like that's not it. But like being a social butterfly or the, the extrovert that I used to be, the past 10 years being in Houston, I've, I've turned into more of an introvert. You know what I'm saying? I do have, I've realized, and I had to admit this, like I'm, I've developed some trust issues when it comes to meeting new people just because like I don't, you know, wavelength wise, we don't be on the same wavelength, you know, and understanding that everybody's not out for the same things you out for, even if they say they are. You know what I'm saying? People, I, I like to say I've been snaked on and flaked on too many times to count. And I'm just a little, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little, I'm going to say shell shock. I'm more so gun shy. Like, I'm cool. Like, I'm going to get by regardless. But I'm not as willing to, like, reach out and do stuff with people just because. And not even on no, like, oh, well, they can stop me. It's just, I don't got time for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I just really don't. And it is tough because, you know, you read all these these articles, these you listen to these podcasts, everybody tells you how you got to network, but it's just hard when you're the only one working. You know, so everybody talk a good game until it's actually time to work, and then they see, like, how you work. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, y'all getting to know me on this YouTube journey, but if you go back and listen to the podcast space or you ask anybody that just kind of know, like, like, I'm the Kobe Bryant of this podcast stuff. Like, just as far as technique, process, procedure, commitment, you know what I'm saying, practice. Are we talking about practice? Like, I, I do this. I live this. And, and I feel like, you know, this is my gift. It has been my gift. And to be great at something, you have to obsess over it. Healthily. Like, healthily. Is that a word? Healthily? Healthily. 
in a healthy way, you have to obsess over it, right? I, I, as y'all see, like, I balance living my life and everything, but when it comes to my craft and my passion, like, I'm locked in on that, and I just don't have no time for BS, because, like, this podcast, content creator space, since the pandemic, it's been a huge influx, right? And people are trying it. Some people, are, are they like it, and it's cool, and they keep it going. Some people just want to try it for a little bit, and then they see, like, the real work that it takes to keep it going and, and to be consistent, and they give up. I don't have time to stop and allow for you to like do this as a hobby and just mess around and you know what I'm saying? What they say, dicking off or like catting off around with this. I don't got time for that. You understand? So like I want to work with people, but I want to work with people that's just as serious as I am. And, and these these days it's hard to kind of vet that. You know what I'm saying? Because before, you know, I personally would just judge people just based on like their values and, and what they stand for, how they go about their business and stuff. But it's harder and harder to see that now because, you know, people will portray things one way and then you get to working with them and all that. And it don't be that, you know, and that's cool. But I just would prefer we just have the, the conversation and the dialogue like right up front so we can. And if it's cool and we ain't got to do that that way. I don't have to worry about sending you this. I can give you one task, one responsibility, and that be it. But people love to be, oh, I'm down, I'm down. That man, Whatever you need, man, just hit me up. Don't say that. Because if I call you at 12 o'clock at night and I'm like, bro, I need you to like do this, this, and that, are you going to do it? You know? And then shout out to my boy Smalls, man. We was talking because a lot of people, too, You even if they just getting started on their journey, they want the support and the help, I'm already like down the path on my journey. I can't stop what I'm doing to come over and do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, for instance, if somebody come up to me like, oh, man, you should get into real estate, man. You should get into selling these houses. I'm sure that's profitable, and I'm sure that there's money in that. But for me, personally, that's not what I'm on. I don't have time to, and not even as a side hustle or as a hobby. I got other side hustles and hobbies, which I'll learn more as we go through this. But that ain't it. You know what I'm saying? More power to you, more respect to you for, for what you got going on, but I'm doing this over here, Right? Now, and unless you're trying to do this over here, it ain't really much to, to go off on. Now, if it intersects, cool. If it don't, it don't. You know what I'm saying? But, but like, so I'm trying to be better at that, just being more objective, keeping things more, like, business-oriented and, and on the up and up. When opportunities and stuff don't pan out, just, like, you know what I'm saying, chuck the deuces and keep it moving, right? The, the, the biggest lesson for me is learning not to take things personally. But it's hard when you put your passion and everything into it. You feel me? Like, it's like... I live this. I love it, but I live it. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's different. These other people out here just playing, and I'm not playing. You feel me? But that's it. Um, let's cut to a commercial from Neezy, though. Naturally named Moisture. You, look, I told you, let's get the haircut. Y'all was looking at me when the video first started. Like, what's going on here? Spinning. Hurricane season. Skeet of the week. Told y'all I was coming back. Told y'all I was coming back. This video gonna be late, man, but it is what it is. Y'all gonna love it anyway. But <clears throat> me, trying to figure out content all week. I got an Adidas unboxing I'm gonna do for y'all. Now, I know what's been going on on social media. I'm aware of the times and what's going on, man. Adidas has kind of had a, a certain fall from grace, if you will, uh, the past couple years, especially the whole fallout with Kanye and the Yeezys and all that. So, you know, the popular consensus is like, oh, Adidas ain't it no more. Adidas ain't got this. Adidas ain't got that. Uh, they need to get Yeezy back because ain't nobody buying no Adidas. Here's the thing. Right. Adidas is still a timeless brand. You feel me? It's still like going to resonate with certain folks. You know what I'm saying? That's not like chasing the trends and all that. Right. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, all the old school dudes is wearing it. Yeah, because it represents something. You see, if you see an old dude with an earpiece and a full Adidas tracksuit, you know what I'm saying? All the way down. You ain't gonna be like, oh, man, he old and washed. Now, you might, but you'd be misinformed. That dude used to be the man back in the day. Still the man, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Now, I was fortunate enough, and I think we announced this on the channel like at the beginning of the year, to be um, added to Adidas affiliate partner team or whatever. So what happens is, you know, I get certain like promo codes out, and it's my job to, you know, promote the brand, if you will. Not a full-on like, hey, y'all, what's up? But it's an affiliate deal. I'll take it. One of my childhood dreams. You feel me? Adidas down. So 
I still be buying stuff, and I said, you know, even though I don't buy the Yeezys and all of that stuff, I'm still going to, like, find the stuff that works for me and that I like, and then just tell y'all about it. Because they still got some clean fits that you can put together. You feel me? Like, the stigma on the brand and stuff, that will pass. It always does. That's why I said Adidas has been around for the longest. You feel me? And all they need is the right person to attach their brand to again, and they'll be back on top. Me, personally, I think they should hit me up. You feel me? But, like... It didn't go to well with Kanye last time. I heard sales for Ivy Park didn't really like do what they projected it to do. But that's also because they tried to take Adidas and make it like into this uber like elite level brand. Adidas is for the people. You understand what I'm saying? And their European sales is always going to keep them afloat as a brand or a business. It's stateside is where they're having the real issue. Because Adidas does like maintain a lot of their stuff through the sports connections. Because soccer is big in Adidas and then they got to deal with the NHL as well. You feel me? So whether or not they do well in basketball and like how they, they like elite athletes in basketball do or in football, it's neither here nor there as long as they keep the they European side of their business. But that's a whole other thing that's just shedding some light and some perspective for y'all. So one of the first shoes that I want to show y'all is uh, I told you I'm a big fan of these, right? The, M I the NMD R1 Boost, you feel me? So it's a very good shoe. I like it because it's comfortable, right? It's very, it's, I feel like it's a dad shoe, right? It's still stylish and they come in all different like, you know what I'm saying, designs, colors and all that. But the, the model of the shoe and all that is very like comfort driven, right? It's more for functionality. Now, I did cop these. I'm about to show them to you. What we got? What we got? What we got? What we got? I cop these because I like the color. So. Y'all know the agency. Woo! Look at that. See that? Boom. On the back. Feel me? Nice little design. Basic. You know what I'm saying? But still enough flair. You feel me? And then I, what I like is this sole here. I always go with this because it's straight black. Easy to, to keep clean. You ain't got to worry about it. You can just wipe these down. But it's comfortable. This is a very comfortable shoe. Right? I bought this color because if y'all hip... Uh, the Midnight Club Agency, this is our brand colors, and I always say it. If Adidas come out with a certain, like, with this colorway that I, and a shoe that I like, I'm going to get it to match all my, like, Midnight Club stuff. We got merch. Go to mncagency.com slash shop. But this colorway, and we, we did it intentionally, uh, South Beach, right? Miami Vice, 1980s, that, that, that synth wave, if you will, right? But this is very Miami in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? That's the vibe that we have with Midnight Club, just some wolves running wild. So I needed a, a good, comfortable shoe that I could wear. I could throw this on with some all black and a white tee, all black and the Midnight Club windbreaker. Again, go click on mmcagency.com and check out like the merch and stuff that we got there. And you can go buy these and line it up. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't be running around perpetrating like you're down with the wolves, but it'll make you feel like you are. You feel me? But this is a very good shoe. You know what I'm saying? The sole. It has the support in the midsole area and all that. The back is a little bit, you know what I'm saying, for your heel, which I, I like the thickness on that. That's really cool. And then it's just simple. Simple and plain. Black shoe. I more so got it just for the color. They even kind of blacked out like the, um, if you see right here, they started putting it so it had that fancy European feel. But <clears throat> I started putting, I got it because like they blacked this part out. But like they have some that like have the writing on there in a different color and all that. Don't matter. I say check the Adidas website out and then just kind of find you what you like. But they got different colors. You feel me? Yeah, say right here. The brand with the three stripes. If you can see closely. Neezy will edit that. Or not. <laughs> or not. <clears throat> right. But no, really like this shoe. I got like at least four pairs of these now in different colors. I showed y'all the red and black ones that we did the one time. I got the uh, some black with like a white bottom, but like they red and uh, red and blue. I like those, because those kind of like my everyday ones. And then I got some straight black ones, right? It's like these, but they just all black. Very comfortable shoe, dad shoe, you know what I'm saying? Go to the zoo, go to the park, go to the grocery store, you know what I'm saying? And you can still kick ass in them. You feel me? Love these. Now, another one of my favorites, and I always talk about in high school how like, I was big, like middle school and high school when I started buying my own shoes, Adidas was like my shoe of choice, my brand of choice, right? Partially because one of my favorite, favorite basketball players was Tracy McGrady, right? Now, they have re-released his shoes. I didn't buy them because they're basketball shoes. And I, I haven't been hooping in a minute, 
probably suck by now, but I'm not going to waste my time out there. Now, and while I like T-Max shoes, I don't really think that they the best with outfits. Not, you know what I'm saying, as an adult. Now, when I was a kid, I was rocking Mama Grady's, you couldn't tell me nothing. But there is one shoe, another shoe. I missed out on this wave early, but I caught on late. The Crazy 8s. Right? I had a pair of Crazy 8s. They was literally the best shoes. I wore the hell out of those shoes. I still got them. They dusty. They beat up. The 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 strings is all kind of popping out the sides. Because I, I hooped in these shoes. I cleaned them up and was like wearing them with different fits. Like, because it was like the way it's designed and everything, man. Like the all white and black with the stripes on there. Like, and it's got the, like the chunky kind of bottom. So I said, if they ever re-release this shoe, I don't care what's going on. I have to buy them. And lo and behold... They re-released them. Look at this. Bam. Now, a couple things with this one. Let me see. Look at this. Woo! Rest in peace to Kobe. It's something about it, too. When you wear these, people know what's up. Like, the, the shoe itself just reeks, like, of greatness. You feel me? Now, the other pair, the original pair that I had was more like cloth. You feel me? And it was all black. This, and I didn't realize it until after I bought them. It's like a slate gray, but that's cool. I don't care. Like, it's just an awesome shoe. I'll wear it regardless. But it's like a slate gray, and it's leather. You feel me? Kind of like an aged leather. And it's got a couple, like, different designs on there. So, of course, that's the, the regular Adidas one. Then you go here. The crazy, you know what I'm saying? The crazy 8 logo down here as well. Now, some of them, you have, it'll have the 8 here and all that. But, like, of course, you know, this is a, a re-rock, a re-edition. You know what I'm saying? Then, of course, they put the... The purple and gold on there just as like a what up to Kobe. Because like really, Nike is re-releasing Kobe's whole line. So again, Adidas is just trying to like follow suit and stay and stay attached to it. But very good shoe. You know what I'm saying? This is a comfortable hooping shoe. Okay? But I don't plan on hooping in these. I plan on like just throwing these on with something. Now, y'all know me. I always try to pick my shoes based on my ability to make them last and keep them clean. So this makes me nervous. But that's just how the Crazy 8s are. The Crazy 8s got the white bottom. I missed out on the... The second wave of them that came out where they kind of modified them and had like different colors where the bottom wasn't white. But still a good shoe nonetheless. All of this, like, like it's redesigned. Because the thing about Adidas too with their hoop shoes, they're not just putting out the same shoe that they had. You feel what I'm saying? Like they actually redesigning the technology so that it's actually comfortable and like, you know what I'm saying? It, it forms around you. Like the inside of this thing, look at this. Because And all my guys who hoop know this. It's important on the inside of your shoe, man, to, like, have that type of, like, cushion and support, right? Everybody not trying to get you to hoop in, like, the low tops and all that. It's like, nah, look, this is soft. This this forms around, like, your ankle and everything and protect you. You want to go out like Aaron Rodgers, you feel me? But overall, good shoe. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I had to, like I said, it was a must-have. Only thing I didn't like is, right, so I showed y'all how, like, they got the different logos and stuff on there. Come on, man. Come on, man. I, I get it. I don't mind the Adidas, but Adidas equipment, it's almost like the Team Jordans almost, man. That's the only knock that I have on this shoe. But if you got pants on, I mean, wearing shorts, you'll probably see it. Nobody really cares. They just know that it's the Crazy 8. But if you got pants on, nobody's going to see this. I thought this was a little tacky. I'm not going to lie to you. A little tacky. But I'm cool. I would have rather had the little 8 logo on there or just like, you know, the Adidas sign and that's it. But neither here nor there. Still a dope shoe. I rock with it. I recommend it. I had to get it. The only other shoe, because I wear Adidas all the time, the only other shoe that, that I would possibly like jump on like this would be like the Gary Paytons. Y'all know which ones I'm talking about. The ones that kind of zip up and stuff. That would be the only one I'll step outside of like my Adidas, like, you know what I'm saying, affiliation with, man. Because those Gary Paytons, the gloves, man, fire. But let me know what y'all think, man. I say go cop. I always put my, my affiliate link in the description. You know what I'm saying? You click on that. At least I get credit for it Like when you click it. You understand what I'm saying? And then depending on what's going on, what sales they have, it, it'll be a promo code. You can follow me at Skeet Gross, and then I'll, you know, I'll be posting like with the different promo code stuff. They roll them out every couple weeks. You feel me? So appreciate y'all for checking it out, man. Till next time, Skeet of the Week.